Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about Etsy Facebook ads and give you another alternative that you can use besides Etsy ads. So if you want to learn how to run an effective marketing campaign using Facebook ads, make sure that you watch all the way till the end. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel and you want to learn how to grow an impactful online business, don't forget to subscribe today and give this video a thumbs up. So let's go ahead and dive in into this tutorial. The reason why I wanted to do this video is that with all the new changes that XE has made with the XE ads, um, you might want to think of a different alternative to drive traffic back to your listings and to your products. And Facebook is a great alternative. I actually use Facebook every single day as a freelancer and also on my full-time job. And if you do it the correct way, it could drive tons of traffic and also conversions. If you do it the incorrect way, then yes, it could be a waste of money. Um, so definitely gonna go through an ad. I'm gonna make like a fake ad and kind of just walk you through it and kind of pinpoint the things that you have to pay attention to when you're running a campaign. So for this video, we're gonna be doing a traffic campaign and that basically means that you want to send people to a specific destination whether it's on or off Facebook um, such a website in this case it will be your Etsy store and you could do your Etsy store in general or you could do a specific listing it really depends on what you want to do now normally when I do a campaign I name the campaign whatever product I'm promoting so in this case, I'm just going to do, I usually put the month in the beginning. That way I can analyze it for the month before and the month after. And I'm going to put here blue invite. I just did like a fake uh, mock-up for now just to kind of do like an ad with you guys. However, make sure that whatever product you are promoting, you name the product right here. You put the name there. That way you could have that for reference later on when you're looking at ads and refining the ad. Um, keep in mind that when you run Facebook ads, you're not going to get the best results on the first ad. Some people do, but majority of the times you have to keep running ads, keep refining it, keep looking at it, see what's working, see what's not working, change it around, change your custom um, audience, your interests, your demographics until you find the perfect um, interest, demographics, etc. that's driving you um, the best results to your store. So just keep that in mind. It takes practice a little bit, to be quite honest. Once you put in your name here, the campaign name, you continue. And from here, what I normally do is I keep it the same, um, the same name. So I'm just going to put blue invite. We're going to leave this as website because we're driving traffic to the website. So I'm going to leave that as website. We're going to just leave this off right here. You don't need to touch that. Once you have an audience, you could save it. I have all of these audiences that I have saved. Um, for this one, we're just gonna do a new one. So I sell digital downloads and I could pretty much sell it anywhere I wanted to world, worldwide. I'm just gonna do United States for now. Um, keep in mind that whatever products and services you sell, if you sell stuff that you do ship out to people, make sure that you pick all the countries that you currently will ship it out to. Um, don't put everyone or everything, especially if you know you can't ship out there. So you pick here what countries you want to target. So I'm just going to do United States and I'm going to do Canada too. That's usually the two that I normally work with. And you could put here any, you could put an address, you could put a zip code, you could make it just local if you want. It just really depends on what you want to do. Now, what I highly recommend for everyone is to start building their own target audience, like building um, a profile of who is your ideal customer. It's important to start doing that and practicing it, um, especially when you start doing Facebook ads or any other types of ads, because it does ask you for the age, the gender, the language, detailed information about this specific person. And if you have no information, you really don't know who to target. However, 
if you sit down and you start writing an audience profile and you start thinking, okay, I'm selling wedding invites. So normally this will be targeted for a woman. So that's what I'm going to pick today, a woman. My ideal target customer is anywhere between 25 to 45. So that's what I'm going to change this to. So I'm going to change this to 25 and 45. How did I identify who is my ideal customer? I do this by looking at XC stats and I also do this by reviewing my Google Analytics stats. And you could connect your XC store to your Google Analytics. I don't know if you guys know that, but it's very, very important to do that because it's going to give you additional information on who's visiting, who's buying from you. If you guys haven't done it yet, I will leave a link below this video of for how to connect your Etsy store to your Google Analytics. I highly recommend doing that because it's going to give you more information. And the more you know about your audience, the easier it is to find the, the right people that are interested in your products. So for me, it's between 25 and 45, a woman. And here, you could play around with the detailed targeting. Um, I usually do, I'm sorry, English here, all. And I just keep it English because everything in my Etsy store is in one language, even though I speak Spanish. So for the sake of this ad, I only keep it in English. Now, for here, for detailed targeting, I like to mix it up. I like to find people that are newly engaged, people that are have interest in wedding. And I also like to target big Facebook pages or big companies. So I'll always target Wedding Wire. They're really big in the wedding industry. So then I, I keep, you know, I add them to the list. And I always do tie the knot. Those are like kind of like my two favorite ones. Tie the knot. And then I will type in here wedding and I will um, click on interests. And then you could also click on suggestions and it's going to give you additional options. Now, I like to pick someone that is newly engaged three to six months. I found that, that between three and six months, my conversions were a little bit higher when I did one year because they have a whole year to plan, they're not, they, they might be shopping, but they're not ready to go ahead and buy right now. So between six months, three months and six months, those have actually give me a better conversion. So that's what I stick with now. So I'm going to put newly engaged three months, newly engaged six months. And then I'm going to go down. I'm going to put engagement. And I have right now, two, three, four, five, six of them. So I'm going to do one more. You, you could target wedding planners because they usually are looking out there for different stuff for the wedding. And I've gotten a lot of people that are planners for weddings that buy a lot of my products. So I will select this and let's keep looking here. Okay. All right, so I think I'm good with, with the options that I just picked. Okay, so from here, I could save this audience if I wanted to for future reference. You could just click here, save audience, and you could just name the audience, so wedding, um, engage, wedding invite. So you could kind of do this if you wanted to and save it for future reference if you wanted to use it again. I'm not going to save it this time, but you could save it. Now, right here, normally I tell people just leave the automatic placements. You could actually do an edit placement, which means if you want your campaign to only run on Facebook or only run on Instagram, this is where you change it here. So if you wanted it only to be on Facebook, then what you could do is you could remove all of these here. And you could say, I just want this on Facebook only. I do not want to do Instagram stories. I do not want to do messenger stories. Um, I don't want to do Instagram feed and you could just remove and just keep just the Facebook option, which is Facebook news feed. Obviously, if you unselect all of these, your cost will go down a little bit, 
because of the fact that you're only showing it in this one platform. If you add all of them, then the cost does, does go up a little bit more. So just keep that in mind. Um, for me, I'm just going to leave it automatic. I normally like it automatic. After you select your targeting, it's going to give you this estimated reach right here. So the reach is the potential of people, the potential of, of the audience, basically. How many people most likely will see this particular ad per day? So it's anywhere between 1,900 to 5,400. And you're approximately going to get 39 to 123 clicks per day. So it's pretty good. Uh, and your potential reach is 27 million. Um, so that's not bad. Obviously, if you want to play with this and change it around, you could do that with over time. You could adjust it daily if you wanted to. And this is set on a daily budget of 20. That's normally what I spend. Um, you could start as low as $5 if you wanted to. Um, if you are new to Etsy, I'm sorry, new to Facebook ads, I do recommend a lower budget. $5 to $10 a day is really good. And you could keep adjusting it. If you want the number of reach to increase, then you could add more stuff here. Um, just make sure that you just don't add anything and everything. Make sure you add things that make sense. What are people looking for? So online shopping is too broad. So you're going to be showing your ads to people that probably are not interested. However, if somebody is... Newlywed, that wouldn't be the right person, right? Because you're selling wedding stuff and they're already married. So making sure that you pick the right um, interests or the right demographics is really, really important. So for instance, let's see here. Um, the knot is pretty good, so we could pick that one. And Davis Bridal, because a lot of people that search for that is because they're looking for a wedding dress. So when you do that, you could start adding more and your reach will get bigger and sometimes your clicks will get more as well. So but you have to play with it a little bit more. So just keep that in mind. Now, what I normally do is I pay for link clicks. I want to just get paid whenever somebody clicks on the link. Now, you could do landing page views, um, which is they show your ads to people who are most likely to kick, click on your ad. For me, I only want to get charged when somebody clicks on the ad. So I always pick this one. Overall, when you're doing it for like a regular campaign and you're trying to grow brand awareness and also get clicks, the landing page views is a good option. But when you're trying to just go for the clicks only so you don't get charged for something that you didn't, that somebody saw but maybe didn't click, I usually just go for the link clicks. So just keep that in mind. You could always do A-B testing. You could do two ads, one with link clicks and one the, with landing view page and see which one performs better. Always doing A-B testing is probably the best way to kind of determine what route works better for you. For me, I always do link clicks. Now, I set it up as a daily budget um, of 20. We're doing for this video $5. And then you could either set a, a start date, end date, what I would do is, especially when you're in the beginning, in case you do forget, maybe do like a week, just run it for a week, um, put an end date for that particular week. That way you don't forget to turn it off just in case um, you didn't want it to turn off. So I'm going to just leave it for a week. So I'm going to put it to, let's say the end of the month for six days and I'm going to continue. And this is going to guarantee that you don't spend more than $30 in the next six days because that's the budget that you put in there. Make sure you double check everything so you don't put an additional five or an additional zero by mistake. Here, you would do the same thing. You would name your ad. I usually leave it the same. It's just easier for me if it's across all the same. Um, so September blue invite. Make sure that when you're doing a Facebook ad, your Instagram page is already connected to your Facebook ad if you want to promote on Instagram. If not, it won't let you do it. And here you will select whether you're doing a carousel ad, which means you're adding multiple images in one ad, which I absolutely love. I actually have a video 
on carousel ads i will leave a link below in case you guys want to watch that we're doing a single ad for this video so here you will upload the video the image so i did an image earlier it's not the best image this was this was just an example that i did your image has to be 1200 pixels by 628 pixels so 1200 by 628 pixels so just keep that in mind so what you would do is here you would put the the headline um so i have my headline already well i'm gonna put here um wedding invites personalized invites so i'm gonna call it wedding personalized invites and then the primary text is the text that goes above the picture. I already have mine um, written out for that. So let me get it. Here's mine. Okay. So find a wedding invitation you love for a price you could afford. Ships quickly. Ship invitations. Perfect. And then... Description is optional. I usually just leave it um, blank or you could just type in learn more if you want. But the call, the call to action is already there. So you don't necessarily have to put it. I would just leave it how it is. Um, and here you will put the link to the actual page that you're promoting. So I'm just going to go to Etsy right now. And I'm just going to grab any link that I see just to kind of give you guys an example. Let's do this one. I don't know whose story this is. This is just an example. So you grab the link and you will put it right here. All you have to do is copy this link here. And this link will lead to this actual product. That's all you have to do. So you put the link there. It will come up as XE as you can see it change. You put your headline right here. You put the primary text. Um, be careful with typing click to learn more or click to buy now. Uh, Facebook is very particular with, with, with wording. If you add call to actions that says click to buy, sometimes your ad will get denied and you have to go back and change the verbatim. Um, now I just don't do that anymore. We, we were able to do that in the past future, but now they're getting stricter. So... I would just leave it how it is. Um, the call to action, learn more is here. So you don't really need to do anything else. You could change this if you wanted to. And you could say, um, apply now, book now. You see, none of these kind of relate to what we're trying to do. The only other one would be shop now. I think that would be the most appropriate one, actually. Better than learn more. Um, even though the learn more is not that bad either. But the learn more is, is good. Now, as you can see, when I put that link, it's taking the meta, it's taking the title and putting it on the bottom. So what I would do is change it by adding my own text because that doesn't look good, especially if you didn't format your title correctly. It just looks, it, it doesn't make sense. So what I would do is here put um, beautiful invites, fast turnaround, something like that. Let's see. There you go. And I think that looks better because it's pulling from the actual listing, the meta, the meta information. And if you don't have a me the meta information like correctly formatted, then it looks like gibberish. So it's just better if you put something down there. Um, fast turnaround is a, a quick way. It's a good call to action because people see it and they're like, okay, a lot of people are buying stuff last minute. They they probably want you know, a fast turnaround. So that's just a good way to make somebody want to click to go ahead and buy. So this is how your ad, um, that's all you have to do after that. And this is how your ad would look. You could play with this right here um, to see how your ad would look in desktop. This is how it's going to look in mobile. This is how it looks. Um, instant articles, this is how it looks. So it kind of gives you an idea of how it would look throughout different platforms. This is a, a Facebook story. Um, the only downside of doing, when you do a Facebook ad, if you choose Facebook stories, because it's a different um, optimization for the photo, 
as you can see this fits perfectly for a facebook ad but when you do facebook story which i think is down here it doesn't look the best so what i would do is when you are doing your placements over here um, and you're selecting automatic or edit i would edit and i would just put it on facebook only alone um because in other placements like instagram which is a square or instagram stories or um, facebook stories which is vertical and it's 1200 by 800 this photo wouldn't be the the best photo for that so i would just do either a separate campaign where you size the image correctly for that platform and do this campaign only for facebook um, because you want to optimize it for that particular platform in order to receive the most clicks and hopefully the most conversions that's really really important once you're done with the ad, all you have to do is just um, click on confirm. I'm not going to run this one today, but you click on confirm. It could take up to 15 to a whole day, 24 hours for your ads to get approved. And once they're approved, you'll start seeing the traffic. And I highly recommend checking your ad every day or every other day just to see how it's performing, just to see if it's getting reached, just to see if people are actually clicking on it. And then if you need to adjust it and maybe add additional interest or demographics, doing that to increase the likelihood of your ad performing better. So guys, this is how you run a Facebook ad that drives traffic to your Etsy store. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and thank you guys for watching.